Hello everyone, how are you? Uh, I'm cutting it, That's her name is Moo, that is one of my sister's cats. Um, I know I'm cutting it close to the new moon. Um, for those of you who are new, I am a full-time caregiver to my daughter who has Rett syndrome. It's R-E-T-T, -T, not to be confused with Gone with the Wind Rett. Um, but yeah, she cannot use her hands and a lot of other things. <laughs> and so, yeah, we've been very busy uh, with that here. Um, we started Michael and the Galactics this week. It was so much, it was really wonderful meeting. I felt just like so much, a breath of fresh air. So it's nice to have all of you who are new to the Metatron Chorus join us. And then we have a Jiria Circle um, the night of the 17th at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll start our new moon circle. And we will have additional full moon meetings here and there, especially, you know, for eclipses and things like that. So this new moon in Gemini comes just, the energy of that will still be taking place when we move into the solstice. We have a lot of new stuff going on. Not so easy stuff. Um, we had Sedna. Sedna takes 11,000, about 500 years to go around and come back. So she has not been in Gemini for 11,487 years. Um, those dwarf planets have different orbits. So it's not always that precise every time they make a revolution. But she's from 1966. So if you're born in 66, moving forward, she has been in Taurus this whole time. And Sedna is, it's an Inuit legend about a woman who was terribly abused by the patriarchy. And so much so that she vowed that she would rather be lonely the rest of her days on the earth rather than to be with a man. So Sedna, everybody, you know, most of us have it in Taurus or at the last degrees of Aries. It really, we look at the house for a planet like that uh, because, you know, they don't change signs for a very long time. So the house is important and that's where you could be feeling completely alone. So if you have planets right now at 0, 29, those anoretic degrees of the signs, they're getting Pluto and Sedna, have been getting Sedna for the 29 degrees. But, um, you know, we want to note that because Gemini, of course, is the sign of the mind and how we teach, how we learn. And what we feed our mind is really determines how our life goes and the quality of life that we have. So something important to note with that. Um, also, right now in the Sky series, who she is... You know, one, I believe the co-ruler, not maybe co-ruler, but one of the rulers of Virgo because she is the sickle, right? Where we reap the harvest. And she has to do also with diet, nutrition, what we eat. She is at the last degree of uh, Virgo. So she's in a harmonious trine with Pluto, who is now back at the last degree of Capricorn. Because in the universal chart, series falls, my, um, I just realized that the picture that I was going to show you, it's on the ground. Um, so we'll do it without the picture. But they're in a harmonious trine. So this could be a great time to, like, get rid of old habits, always putting our emphasis on the new habit. So, you know, some new habit that you want to, that you want to go on with could just be like, you know, remembering to take your supplements every day or something like that, anything like that, but something that you enjoy, um, might want to be careful with that energy, what it is that you are eating. Um, things could kind of rush through <laughs> or, um, they could just get stuck, uh, depending on what's happening in your chart with those. So this new moon takes place in London at 5 37 AM on the 18th of June in Chicago, it's 11.37 p.m. on the 17th. And then in Sydney, it's the 18th at 2.37 p.m. And it takes place between 27 and 28 degrees of Gemini. So look at where that falls in your chart. 
Um, in the universal chart, it's actually in the 12th house. There's a lot of things in the 12th house that says to me secrets, which has a lot to do with Gemini as well. Um, Mercury is in Gemini right now, his sign of Gemini. And so he, and either way, he will, he rules the new moon in Gemini and he is at the 12th degree. The 12th degree is, um, so these Sabian symbols, by the way, were written in the 1920s. They're not all PC. Um, but this symbol is a black slave girl asks her rights of her mistress. So it's really letting go of the notion that something outside of you is, you know, ha can have control over you. And then Metatron is, at, is adding um, that you don't need to request permission, that you have free will choice and that you can honor yourself in free will choice. And Gemini, the sign of Gemini is about choice too. So this is, you know, an energy that would play out over the next 20 months. I say about two years for this all to play out. So just try to note like what house that is for you. Also pay attention to your progress chart or your solar and your solar return chart too, because it may not be significant in your natal chart, but in those charts, it might have more significance for you. So what's interesting and you know, the fixed stars that are involved are not so, um, well, you know, I'll be honest with you. Most of the fixed star interpretations were done at a time when we just had a darker view, when Saturn was like the last planet in our consciousness. And he was considered more, you know, like the taskmaster, the lord of karma uh, who punished, right? So a lot of the fixed star interpretations are super dark. Um, but the new moon takes place with the asteroid Juno. So there's a partnership energy. Uh, Gemini, Mercury can also be the counterpart. So that fits, um, that it could be something romantic, um, or just, it could even be business partner, but they're with Polaris, which is our North, North pole star right now. Also Metatron had me enter. He gives me different asteroids sometimes. So panacea, which is a solution to a problem or where we can make a way where maybe he's saying there wasn't a way, or we felt like we were prohibited, uh, Panacea is with Chiron. Chiron has a lot of magic. You know, he's not even here permanently. He's temporarily here for like, you know, I think it's like 20,000 years. But he isn't like a regular player, okay, in the Milky Way. So, um, you know, he has a lot of special qualities. And I believe like a lot of astrologers that we don't quite know all of the gifts of Chiron. He's very significant in soulmate union charts as well. Um, but the new moon... So the North node in the sky is with Jupiter, meaning that they're parallel by declination, which is the energy of, um, a conjunction, but, but isn't, it's parallel by declination. Um, Jupiter of course is always about promise and blessings. Now in Taurus, things do tend to take a while to take off, right? Um, and the North Node being with him, it's sort of like a promise, especially with Saturn um, stationing at seven degrees Pisces on the same day. He's stationary retrograde at the time of the new moon. So right there, you know that there needs to be an investment of time um, and that this isn't probably something that's going to move forward so quickly. Now, if it's something that you've been waiting for, that that is probably tr not true you know that could be an answer that comes in that panacea something comes together lightning speed and and is surprising right because um so looking up in the sky uh and by latitude uh it you will see if you can see i don't know if you can see all these planets honestly i use the sky view app if you have iphone the sky view app is a good one i don't i don't think i paid for it um, but Saturn, Neptune, Jupiter, Uranus, Mercury, and Pluto are all together for, so that's pretty significant too. So that is, uh, change, um, what it is that we desire that we're longing for, uh, something of permanence and something else where spirit comes in and just, and is like, oh, this is what you wanted. Here you go. <laughs> but again, may take a while to plan to, uh, oh, that's funny that I said plan out. 
I was going to say play out, but yeah, developing a plan, um, coming up with strategy. We've still got the lovers, uh, Venus and Mars together in the sign of Leo. They are with Pallas Athena as well. So we're really encouraged to play and to do something that brings joy to our heart, that brings joy and satisfaction to our heart, to the sense of the inner child. Accomplishing something could be like a long held dream with everything that's going on in the 12th house in the universal chart. The sun and the asteroid Sphinx, which is the mysteries of the universe and where we're kind of like, huh? Why'd that happen? Sometimes it plays out like that. They are together. They are parallel by declination as well. So could be like miracle, like something that you've been waiting for for a long time. Gemini's, you know, had that very long Mars retrograde. I know a lot of you that I'm friends with really went through it um, while Mars was in Gemini. This is like the redemption, uh, you know, what it is that maybe you've been longing for for a long time and just a sense of relief. Um, and he is saying uh, long held satisfaction. That would be Jupiter and Taurus. So something that will bring a long satisfaction. Um, as well, if you uh, don't have a new moon ritual, good idea to write out on a piece of a sheet of paper what it is that you like your wishes for, hopes, dreams, wishes. You can be as specific as you like. Um, I always then use the flip side to what I want to like have go you know, different situations and circumstances, and then you can burn that, and then you put it outside in the ground and uh, let the universe take that with your wishes until it comes back to you. Pluto, I want to mention, um, because of, with Pluto moving back into Capricorn, Pluto is going to be flirting with that 28 to 0 to 2 until November of 2024. So that's going to continue. I mean, he's finally done with Capricorn in November of 2024, but you know, he is square the nodes. So Mercury is at almost 12 degrees of Gemini and the Sabian symbol is a black girl requesting freedom. Pluto squaring the nodes of fate is the same thing. Breaking free, breaking out, um, you know, for long lasting satisfaction with Pluto. It's, you know, it can be issues of worth, wealth, um, your inheritance, uh, what it is that you ha inherited through the DNA and how that makes up your subconscious mind and the choices that you make. 90% uh, of our choices are made from our subconscious beliefs, which is why in my work we remove the subconscious beliefs. People do not know what they have in the subconscious until you test for it. It's an interesting, um, you know, because I certainly tested for many more things I never would have thought were true about my subconscious. So, you know, just this is kind of one of those energies where your subconscious, he's saying, will whisper to you. In other words, your fear, well, you'll hear it and you'll be like, what? Where'd that come from? <laughs> A lot of times it's religious stuff. So we're talking about, you know, issues of patriarchy. If we're still resentful of issues of patriarchy, they will find us again because that's like a tie that's just pulling it back. Um, you know, always I remind people we had both, we were both, so got to forgive when we were that male. Um, and then what happened to, uh, the, the feminine and all of that as well. Sedna, um, is a goddess of the ocean. So the higher aspect of Sedna would be coming to the place where you're comfortable with water. A lot of times in dreams, fear is symbolized by water. Or just, you know, when we're not clear, we can be in the water. And that can also be addiction. So it's where she ended up, she was thrown into the ocean or murdered, really, <laughs> drowned uh, in the ocean. But she ended up becoming, like her fingers became the seals and she flourished there uh, and she loved it there. So being comfortable in the depths of emotion um, and Pluto, of course, is that swamp that murky place where the lotus grows, right? Where you get the, the sediment, the rich sediment. So, you know, this is also, Pluto also has a lot to do with the ancestors. So with it being square, the nodes and the nodes are about to shift into Aries. 
and Libra, you know, good time to kind of go through like what you know about male and female connections in your family. Try to see if that maybe has played out a bit in your relationships. Um, but yeah, it is really, like I said, it might be a long time to play out. Um, but a lot of promise in, in the new moon. And I think, uh, you know, as far as those, the negativity associated with the thick stars involved, that could more be in a, a sense of general population. Series we look at with climate change, she is trying Pluto. Um, the sky here is a little bit blue today, but, uh, you know, I'm right outside Chicago. And for most of this season, for about six weeks now, we've had hardly hardly any days with blue sky because we have the fire from first western canada and now eastern canada um you know i will say the energy companies did a fabulous job convincing people in the united states not i get i know it's not worldwide but a lot of people in the united states still don't believe that climate change is happening even though our skies are filled with smoke and we're thousands of miles away from the fire so um yeah also, you know, be really careful with discernment. When, when Pluto and Saturn came together in Capricorn, we've kind of been on this fear, you know, crazy delusional stuff being said and going on. Um, be careful what you're putting into your mind. I knew someone, I was uh, associated with someone at the time who now buys into all of the crazy nonsense and paranoia. Um, and wasn't like that, but thought that they were competing with other people and filled their mind with it all the time. And no matter who we are, it does, we become, he's saying, desensitized. And it begins to make sense when we listen to the same things over and over again. So be really careful in this energy, really practice discernment. And I always say, ask for signs, you know, be specific when you ask for a sign. They'll, they'll deliver. They always do. Uh, but yeah, be a little bit, I mean, you know, we can't say like, oh, if a giant crystal lands in my backyard, but you know what I mean, uh, as general, as specific as you can be within reason. Um, yeah. So anyway, lots of promise, maybe partnerships coming in, uh, maybe friendships, companions, business partners, op or he's saying opportunities, uh, for growth and good and good idea you know while jupiter is in taurus invest in yourself invest in something that boosts your confidence you can't go wrong investing in yourself that is never wasted it'll always come back tenfold also if you are he is reminding me if you are feeling like you know if you're a little bit concerned about money even just giving three dollars or five dollars to some cause any time that we can give from that place, and obviously we're not doing it just to gain, I realize that, but it does help, and it kind of can, he's talking about like, um, he's showing me like a drain that's all stopped up, like a drain, you know, under the street kind of thing, and that once we, that that can kind of break the, the money free and start, have it start flowing again. If we can make, you know, three, five dollar, whatever we can do, ten dollar contribution, just in faith, uh, when we're a little bit nervous about money, that always comes back, too. So, looking forward to seeing everybody at Adiria Circle. And um, I will be back next week. Hopefully, there will be more sleep happening in my house next week. And um, I will be back with all of you then. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.